As a part of this worship service, we will have a time to reflect and participate in the sacrament that our Lord Jesus has given to his people. Please have ready some bread and some wine or grape juice for this time to reflect and to remember. Hello and welcome to worship. This is the a celebration of the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. It's a very special parable today. and is one of my favorites. And um, I do have a couple of announcements that I do want to share with you. First and foremost, um, for those of you who um, um, may not have been around for the last couple weeks, um, being homebound and, and watching this, I do want to let you know that last Sunday, um, that would have been September 11th, um, the congregation of Desert Hills in Green Valley, uh, down there off of I-19, uh, voted unanimous, unanimously to have Pastor Craig Larson as their new associate pastor. So um, the last Sunday that Pastor Craig is going to be here um, teaching and preaching will be October 2nd. And that's just like uh, maybe a, a couple weekends away. And so uh, please keep him in prayer, Suzanne in prayer, uh, Green Valley in prayer, but also keep us in prayer. Um, also, I want to let you know uh, that next weekend, the 25th, uh, 24th and 25th, um, we will begin slowly setting up for our rummage sale. The rummage sale is going to be through the 26th through um, October 1st. There's a lot going on here October 1st. Uh, but if you have um, items that you would like to drop off uh, during the week uh, for the rummage sale, please get them here by Thursday. Let your neighbors know as well that they can bring their items here as well. Or uh, make sure they come here on Friday and Saturday to shop. Um, and so with that, uh, just to let you know, we are uh, at this moment um, planning after the rummage sale to set up uh, for a um, potluck to uh, certainly wish Pastor Craig and Suzanne Godspeed in their new venture in life. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, you're more than welcome to attend. That's going to be October 2nd following the second service. So, uh, But I do want you to prepare our, your hearts and your minds now for worship. And I do pray that the Lord continues to bless you, touch you in a very holy and special ways this week. And um, as we now move into our worship. We continue living our lives together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember these things, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I formed you. You are my servant. O Israel, do not forget me. I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Lord of reckoning, there are times in our lives in which we mismanage the gifts we have received. There are times in our living in which we enhance your kingdom with the gifts we have received. Keep our hearts, our eyes, our faith in your will and in your ways. May your mercy be made known and shared. We observe a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. Have mercy, O Lord, against you. You alone we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, may they therefore declare to us the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask that we now join together in praying the prayer for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Together we pray, Lord God, you call us to work in your vineyard and leave no one standing idle. 
Set us to our tasks in the work of your kingdom and help us to order our lives by your wisdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. first lesson for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the Old Testament prophet Amos. Uh, that's one of Pastor Craig's favorite um, prophets. And, and um, what we have in our lesson today is, is hearing the prophet speak to those who have uh, built up a comfortable life, um, built up wealth, built up um, uh, status and stature uh, on the backs of those who they just seem to neglect. Um, their position in the people of Israel has been uh, manipulated to the point where they are dishonest in their gain. Times are good. Don't get me wrong. Times are very good at this point when Amos writes. Um, there is uh, peace and well-being in Israel. Assyria and Egypt, they're, they're, they're weakened nations now. And they are not out and about trying to take over uh, 
lands and peoples by any means, uh, but yet the people of Israel suffer because of their own leadership. And so we hear this lesson. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great. And practice deceit with false balances. Buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. And selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. This ends our first lesson. Our gospel lesson for this day is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And it's the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Um, Jesus is in this parable mode. Um, he's been speaking about again uh, to the tax collectors and the Pharisees who have been... Um, criticizing Jesus for eating with sinners and tax collectors and known nefarious people of the communities. Um, and, and, and so um, he's been helping people understand um, their place in God's kingdom by teaching in parables. And we do have a parable today uh, that Jesus is using once again um, to illustrate uh, um, of how great value you and I are to God and to his kingdom. And um, it's a tough parable. It's not one of the easier ones. Uh, and yet um, it's a parable I, I, just tend, I just tend to love because to be honest with you, um, in my lack of understanding it completely, many doors and windows are open that I may pursue a better understanding of relationship with the Lord and those who the Lord has called me to serve and who has called you to serve. Anyway, we're going to get into this parable as a part of our sermon this day. And in so let's hear this parable. Then Jesus said to the disciples, now no, I just want to make sure you understand, he's now teaching to his disciples, not the Pharisees and scribes as the previous parables, but this parable is directed to the disciples. Then Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig in. I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors, one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe the master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into their eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one 
and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the gospel of our Lord. Good morning. Welcome to the children's message. What I have this day is um, this cross. Look at that cross. Look at it. It's got, it's got turquoise and jewelry and silver. This is like, oh, this is a beautiful cross. This cross was given to me by one of the members of this congregation, a dear member, before they left and moved to another state. It's, it's a very precious, expensive. Um, I, I wonder how much I could get for this. What do you think I should sell this? Man, I could get a lot of money for this, huh? I'll bet I could probably get $150. Wouldn't that be cool if I sold this and got $150? Wouldn't that be awesome? This gift that cost me nothing, this gift that was given in love, this gift that was given in a relationship of mutual, I mean, just uh, this, we, we were such good friends, good uh, relationship pastor and, and member of our congregation. It was a, it's a great relationship. Wouldn't it just be awesome if I just sold this beautiful work of art for $150? Because it was given to me. It didn't cost me nothing. Pure profit. Oh, yeah. I can't do that. I couldn't do that. It was not given to me as a way and means of making money for myself. It was given to me as a gift of love. It was given to me as a gift of, of uh, remembrance, a gift of faith, given in faith, a reminder of the faith we have. I can't sell this. There's no way. And I think that's what Jesus is trying to get us to think about today in our gospel lesson. Is the gifts that have been given to us by our, our loved ones, by God, um, aren't necessarily given to us to sell and make profit. They're given to us that we may grow. Grow in faith and grow in love with each other and with God. And that's the most important. Because if we serve God in that way, we certainly will be blessed with loving relationships, with a promise of eternal life, with a promise of salvation, rather than serving money, which just wants us to get more and more and more. And that's not really living, is it? Life comes in God and in relationship with godly people. The fullness of life comes when we know that and live that way. And I hope you do. So with that, let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the young people and how indeed they love to give, expecting nothing in return. And may we receive in the same manner your gifts, Almighty Lord, through Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Have a very blessed week and do well at school. All right? God bless you.
Will you please join your hearts and your minds with the words of this prayer? Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day to consider how we go about as disciples living in this realm, the age of, of the, the, the children of this age, and at the same time being children of light. May we hear this word this day to enhance our strength, our faithfulness, our obedience to your word as you have indeed called us, equipped us, and indeed has transformed each and every one of our lives to be children of light through Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who is the risen Christ of God, amen. Our gospel lesson today is this parable. Um, it, it, it's, um, to me, it, it, it's, it's, it's almost so wrong. I mean, it's so wrong on so many levels. Um, when, when you read this parable initially and, and, you, and you hear it really with um, ears that are indeed um, accustomed to hearing the ways of this world. Um, you'll note that, it, it, again, um, Jesus is speaking in a manner in which he's talking about, um, for the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. Um, that he's speaking of those who are the, the children of this age and the children of light. And when we hear this uh, parable through the lens and the ears of that which um, we would consider uh, being children of this age, for certainly we are in the midst of it, um, we hear it in ways that just drives us crazy. Um, it sort of reminds me, to some extent, where um, uh, um, the office of uh, political service has, has, has taken shape in, in the last 20 years. Uh, if, if you have been um, elected to a political office, uh, when you really think about that, um, here is a person in an office, let's say a senator. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't care what state, pick your state, pick your senator, I don't care. Um, but, but here is one who really has been given a position in this nation to use the belongings, the possessions, the money of this nation to benefit themselves. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, let's be honest with you. Uh, it's a temptation, isn't it? It's the, the possessions, the belongings, uh, 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 the, the resources of this nation are at the disposal of this political office. And in so, we find that there are those who have been placed into these positions who are utilizing the resources of another. They're using the resources of the nation to really... Um, pad their own pockets, put themselves in positions in which they are able to um, benefit uh, themselves. They, they create um, opportunities and relationships that allow for the enhancing of, of their own uh, situation. And, and um, to some extent, um, they even are marveled at. Wow, look how he's done. Look how she's done. Look at the life she's built using the benefits and money and resources of everyone else. Isn't that wonderful? These people are smart. They're great. It's intelligent. They're wise. Um, and that's the way of the world, isn't it? It's, it's, it's how the children of this age currently operate. And good for them. Don't get me wrong. Am I jealous? Well, maybe. I don't know. To have the resources of, and belongings of someone else and benefit yourself using other people's possessions and belongings and money, hey, that's, that's the way to go, isn't it? Um, if you are the children of this age. And in our lesson, even sort of, uh, you would say, well, this is what Jesus wants of me as a child of this age. 
So you did a good job, man. I commend you. But what if we were to hear it, which I think Jesus offers it. <laughs> we hear it in a manner in which we are children of the light. How do we, how do you, how do I, as children of the light, hear this parable? First off, I, I, as, as a child of the light, I think we all recognize, as you are a child, I am a child of the light, that we are children of the light, not by our own doing. The life that we have been given to walk in right ways, to walk in the light of Christ, to be a child of the light, um, does not come at our expense or at our cost. We are debtors to the Lord. Um, we are all debtors, and in so perhaps we can hear this parable through the ear and the lens of being a debtor. A debtor in which our life, everything that has come to us, our character, our morals, our ethics, our life, of, of, of sharing in gifts that have been given to us, these gifts that have been given to us by God are not earned, they're just they're bestowed upon us in grace. And in so we are great debtors. We sang last weekend, uh, um, Come thou font, font of every blessing, O to grace how great a debtor I am daily constrained to be. We're debtors. We have received these gifts of the Lord. And, and how can we pay the Lord back? When there's a reckoning, when there's an accounting, just like this, this, this steward, this manager, it came to the attention of the master. Hey, buddy, what are you doing with the gifts? My belongings, my property, mine. What are you doing with them? You're treating them like as if they are useless and of no value. You're squandering. You're wasting them. There's a reckoning. There's an, an accounting of the gifts that have been given to us. How can we repay God back? I mean, have you ever thought, hey, you know, if, if, if the Lord said, hey, it's my birthday, what are you going to get me? What would you give the Lord? What can you give the Lord? What can I give the Lord? What doesn't the Lord have? You know what I'd get him? I'd get him like a, 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 a Bob Ross Chia Pet, man. Does, does the Lord have a Bob Ross Chia Pet? You know, put that, get that, that image of, of, of Bob Ross's head, and then you put that little paste stuff on, and it has a green afro grow out. Does the Lord have one of those? What are you going to give the Lord? We can't repay the Lord. Just like the debtors in our story this day. If they were able to repay the master, they would have already repaid him. But they can't. They're unable to, to repay them. They, they, they're, they're unable to repay the master. The manager takes advantage of that, doesn't he? The manager realizes, hey, my master's calling me for a reckoning. What I've done with his belongings. Uh-oh. What am I going to do? I owe everything to him. Everything I have is his. I've used it to, to make my life what it is. I can't repay him. And even if I did try to repay him, I'm going to be repaying him with what's already his. I, I'm sure he's going to catch on to that. <laughs> so the master 
and the manager relationship has been exposed as one in which this manager has taken advantage and manipulated the master for his own benefit. I think, I think the reckoning's not gonna go very well in here. <laughs> the, the manager is quite aware of that. <gasps> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? At this point, what would you do? What would you do if the master reckoned with you concerning the gifts he's bestowed into your life? They've been squandered. They've been used and manipulated to benefit me as a child of this age, as opposed to benefit those who are of the kingdom of light. What would you do? Well, I think um, we may be able to get a little insight regarding this um, as this manager begins to take the gifts of the master indeed what are you going to do well here in this case this particular manager decides to create some new relationships. The relationship between the master and the manager has been disrupted, and so he's going to make some new relationships using that which is of the masters. The debtors come, and what he says to the debtors is, what do you owe? And then he shows mercy and grace by reducing what is owed. He's manifesting mercy. He's building new relationship on the very grounds of mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Huh. Relationships are rooted in something that are eternal. He's building a place. He's making relationships that are rooted in that which is eternal. And not only that, what, what does that say about the Master? Here now, the debtors who owe have been forgiven and released. And they are aware and see the master in a new light. Not one who is going to bring the hammer down on them because they failed to repay him. But now all of a sudden they see this master for the first time as the embodiment of grace and mercy and forgiveness. Huh. Wow. That's new covenant living, isn't it? That's what Jesus is doing, isn't it? He's revealing the richness of God's depth of grace and love and mercy and forgiveness on the cross. Those become ours. His belongings become our belongings. His way becomes our way. 
And it's rooted in that very core of forgiveness. Yeah, that manager's pretty shrewd. In establishing new relationship rooted in mercy, forgiveness, and grace, as opposed to debt and debtor. Huh. Yeah. I liked it. Actually, I give thanks and praise to God for that. Because I can never repay. We can't repay. Yes, there will be a reckoning. But for us who are up the children of light, it's not one to fear, but it's one to rejoice in. It's one to step into the joy of the Master for being shrewd, for being wise, for being forgiving and merciful. Because that's what's been first shown to us. That's the foundation of our being and life. And that brings the Lord joy. And with that, we say amen. May we now join together our, our very spirit and souls and our minds in prayer. We pray, Lord of grace and mercy, you have come to us in mercy and grace of these gifts we have received. In receiving these gifts, we possess them. May we give to others as we have received from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer prayer. Lord of grace and mercy, as children of light, our journey in this age is one of wonder, of opposition, of curiosity, of joy and faithfulness. Keep the gift of faith active in our lives, shaping our words and our deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of grace and mercy, the seasons are transitioning. And so is this congregation. May we stay focused on you, and may we transition in Christ-like ways, discerning your will for your ministries here. We pray this for all congregations, Almighty Lord, which continue to experience the fallout of COVID. Strengthen them, Almighty Lord, in their resolve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of grace and mercy, we pray for those who are near and dear to our hearts, who are suffering and who are broken. We pray for healing, for mending, for well-being, for peace, as health comes to them, as health is sought, and as health is prayed for. God of deliverance, please deliver. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of grace and mercy, we pray for leaders and leadership in the secular realm and in your kingdom. May their hearts continue to be stirred to lift and benefit others around them with servant hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these petitions, Almighty Lord, and the petitions that rest in our hearts which are too deep to express with words. May your spirit lift them into your presence and make them known to you and to us. For we know, Almighty Lord, that you hear and act in loving and mercy and grace toward your faithful, now and forever. Amen. It is in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed that he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. We now partake in the bread of life, the, the body of Christ is broken for you. And then after the supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this in the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ is shed for you. We now partake. And now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace, now and forever. Amen. May we now join again in prayer, praying the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.